<laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Taranzo Show. Thank y'all for tuning in last time. Y'all bitches made me... Well, that's not nice. You bitches and niggas made me viral. We had a really good show. I want to say I got about 190,000 views across Instagram and TikTok all together from the last couple of videos, not including YouTube. Um... And it's up from here. I was fucking gagged. I have never gotten that many views before. Low key, it did make me nervous to do the next episode. This is like, goddamn, I gotta raise the bar on you, motherfuckers. But it felt good to know that you know I didn't have to like um, put anybody down. I didn't have to talk bad about anybody. Um, you know, be mean. Didn't have to get into the celebrity gossip. It was just me talking my real life shit um, about stuff that I had been through. So yeah, super super grateful for it. And thank y'all so much for the support. Keep tuning. Uh, and yeah, we about to get right into it. I got a couple of things I want to talk about today. I want to start off. Yeah, I want to start off because y'all were talking shit about uh, somebody's about to come in here. But he saw me doing a podcast. So he changed his mind. Um, yeah, I want to talk about um the comment y'all made about me being a side. So yeah, they was like, oh, you're only a side because you're lazy. Remember, y'all know what a side is, top versus bottom, side over here. That's where I am. Um, was like, oh, well, you just don't want to go through the trouble of you know the whole penetration thing. Fuck no, I don't. And it's not easy at work. Do you know how hard it is to suck a dick? My mouth gets tired fast, and don't let me get started on eating ass. My tongue does not last long. That's why I didn't like eating pussy. I'm not lying to you. This is real life um so yeah don't fuck you talking about i'm lazy because i don't want to go through all of that but i have another education thing i do want to talk to y'all about today uh, which is how it all goes down so now we've gotten a step further y'all know the positions of how gay sex works now we're going to talk about the common misconception how everybody thinks that everybody's just shitting on each other not how it happens at all they do what they call cleaning out Whew. Put your good panties on for this one, y'all. Believe it or not, they clean the shit out of their asshole. And the way that they do that, it's the same way. They kind of do it with a uh, douche bottle with the coochie. You basically take, uh, well, there's a couple of different ways now. So you could take the enema, which is basically a bottle. You fill it up with water and you shoot the water up your asshole. Once you do that, um, you get on the ground and you get like in kind of like a fetal position and you got to kind of sit for about five minutes. Um, after you do that, you get back up, get back on the toilet, release everything out. And you basically repeat that process until the water is clean. So no gay people don't go around shitting on each other. The only people that I think that will fall into that bracket of people will probably be DL guys, because I can't really see a DL guy going through the clean out process for one. It takes a very fucking long time. Um, most people I know, they be in the bathroom for two and three hours, like cleaning out, cleaning out, cleaning out, um, because it's a lot of work, especially if you're not expecting to get no dick and you didn't eat fucking tacos, pizza, God knows, whatever else. They don't let you be lactose intolerant, then you're super fucked. Um, and it's going to take you a little bit longer to do what you got to do. Now, in the same breath, everybody does not have the same experience. Uh, my very first ex introduced me to what cleaning out was. Mind you... I didn't get a boyfriend until I was 21 years old. I've been having sex with guys since I was like 17, 16, 17. So all the guys I was fucking before that, they didn't know what the fuck a clean out was. I am recording, right? It's red. Okay, just want to make sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, I didn't know what the fuck cleaning out was. And so I was just fucking niggas. And I never had that, you know, that experience. Thank God to where, you know, somebody has shitted on me or anything. What's up? Look, yeah, we got a live audience here tonight. But, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I didn't know what that process was like before. So I was just fucking and fucking and fucking. And luckily I didn't come across that. Now I heard horror stories, but, oh, you know, they call it painting. Oh, he painted me. He painted me. But, um, yeah, I've never had that happen to me. And so that's what you have to do if you don't want to get shit on yourself while you're doing butt stuff. You got to clean that hole out. And um, there's different ways to do it. You don't have to do the dish version. So they have what you call, a, um, it's called pure for men. And it's basically a pill that you take. I want to say you take it one time a day or two times a day. And so basically the way that it works when you, and if you are a doctor, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, the way that it works every time you eat, allegedly, how it's supposed to work, you're supposed to take a shit after you eat. 
Cool. What this pill does is instead of you having to eat and shit, then eat and shit, then eat and shit, it kind of stores everything until about that third meal. So you have one good shit and then you're good to go. You don't have to do the whole, you know, the addition process, going to the bathroom, sit. You don't have to go through all of that because you didn't took the pill. They are kind of expensive, but there's an alternative to that if you want to have some clean butt sex. And so that's that. I'm moving right along. Oh, speaking of that. So I want to know y'all opinion on something. I kind of want to know y'all opinion on it too, y'all. We got a live audience here. Uh, about being friends with your ex. And how far can you really take that? I personally have been a damn fool to believe that my exes could have been friends with their ex. Knowing what kind of person they were and their ex were. And they were still, you know, bullshitting behind closed doors unfortunately enough but i personally feel like the kind of person i am if i'm still talking to my ex i have any kind of relationship with my ex at all there's a reason i have three exes total and i only talk to one we ended on good terms um and we didn't got to, it's kind of crazy like to think about it i don't know if you ever thought about like somebody that y'all was dating before and you like damn how the fuck am i gonna get over this person i don't want to see them fucking nobody else i don't want to see them having sex with nobody else kissing nobody else you don't even want nobody to look at them the wrong way but you know that y'all can't be together no more that's where me and this nigga was at but it's kind of crazy that the shit didn't flip now like me and this nigga be talking about people that we be fucking now um you know the dates that we be going on encouraging each other to, you know go out give them a chance be nice to the guy and we got to a point to where like we actually like fucking friends now we realized that we are better as friends than relationships but when you have somebody coming in um you know if you're talking to somebody you're dealing with somebody everybody's not going to be that understanding that all they're going to know is that's your ex why the fuck are you still talking to them and it's kind of come it comes off as toxic but i guess if you a toxic motherfucker are y'all cool with y'all exes still yeah okay now let me ask you this she said she talked to all her exes this is a female y'all so she said she talked to all of her exes let me ask you this if you was talking to somebody right now and your ex called you on the phone would you feel comfortable enough to answer that phone ah uh, so you but you have an ex where it would be cool you like this is my ex we cool it ain't like that you expect them to understand would you understand Oh, see? And look, she said it's once she's still plowed down. <laughs> see, and yeah, you got to say the nigga under Papa John's. For real. <laughs> He's called her about 16 times, y'all. Run! Oh my God, she's still scrolling. Like, no bullshit. Niggas are scary, Larry. Uh-uh. What's his at name? We're going to tell them to get him. No, I'm playing. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. No. Westmark group chat. Westmark group chat. Yeah, they do. Okay, so another thing. Let me see. So that's what I was getting. I was talking about exes and stuff. Me personally... I'm kind of 50-50 with it. I feel like some exes are seasonal because I feel like my second ex, we were never supposed to fucking be together. I think he was literally a lesson for me to kind of know what I like, what I don't like, what I'm willing to put up with, what I'm not willing to put up with. Um, not to say he was kind of like a... Not like a rebound. I really liked them, and I guess you could say even loved them, but I can tell we were not going to be together forever, I guess. You can kind of, I don't know. I don't know if y'all can like feel the same way. You can just kind of like feel that you're not supposed to be with this person forever. But it's like, God damn, how do you tell them? And I remember I used to kind of be in relationships that I didn't really want to be in because I used to be too nice of a guy to break up with people. And I would just kind of be miserable. And I would sit and sit and sit and sit and, you know, do stuff uh, to annoy them and everything that they do would annoy me. But I would not break the fuck up with them because I didn't want to be mean. And I also am not the kind of person to like, go out and like cheat or do some weird shit like that so yeah i just became super nonchalant and then we ended up breaking up don't be a piece of shit like me but that was in high school i'm a better guy now what else do we have here 
Speaking of fucking plugs, that's what we're about to talk about. Um, we're gonna talk about you piece of shit, hating ass, raggedy ass, call yourself drug dealing ass plugs. You are a piece of shit. You're liars. You're late. This one nigga had the nerve. Give me a second. This one nigga had the nerve. Mind you, I've been buying weed from this motherfucker for God no weeks, weeks. Every other day, the same thing. 25, 35, 25, 35, 25, 35, 25, 35. This motherfucker pulls up. It's 30 today. My thing is this. When do you tell somebody that? You don't pull up. But we had a conversation. Oh, yeah, I'm about to come through. The same thing. Cool. And you get there and go, oh, shit, my shit, 30 now. What? No, you're fucking dumb. Take it back to where you got it from because I don't got it. I got 25 exact. And I don't give a fuck if I pull up my cash app and you see $40 on there. You ain't getting it. That's for my bottle, motherfucker. We're mind your business. Uh, and then the worst kind of ones is really the ones where they feel like they got to put somebody, another weed man down because you're not shopping with them no more. So say, for example, you hit up two weed. The first weed man don't respond. The second weed man, um, you hit the second one up. So then you're like, hey, I need a 3-5. The one is like, all right, bet, 25, but I can't bring it to you until about 9 o'clock. You hit the second one up. You're like, yo, I need a 3-5 for 25. He like, shit, mine 30. You're like, oh, okay, never mind. You know, I'm going to just wait on the dude for 25. He like, well, that shit can't be gas. You paying 25? Like, if you tell them, you're like, you know, I paid 25 for mine. They're like, oh, you must be smoking some bullshit. They met, you know, I got za. I got real za. And I'm like, you know, you know, they do too. You know, both of y'all can have za for different prices. Surprise. Uh, it's crazy how it works. Yeah, and they'll be like, shit, you must got that bullshit. Can't be no gas. It's like, no, you weird ass nigga. It's simple fucking math. He is plugged in more than you to be able to sell weed to me for a better price. The fact that he's plugged in more, he can let his prices go for a better price than you. He's the better plug at this point. You're the weaker link. And now you're mad at him. So now his weed must be bullshit and his weed got to be trash. And oh, okay, if you want to smoke that bullshit, then that's on you. Fuck you. Your weed fucking sucks. And guess what? If you really take it there, I'm going to go to the ugly nigga. Because we all know ugly niggas got the best weed anyway. That's why I go to you every day. I know you're watching. No, I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. None of my plugs got my social media. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And if they do, I will probably have to start smoking crack. Because they're not going to serve me anymore. But no, it's, it's just a mess. And, um... Shout out to the ugly niggas with good weed. It's the, le it's the least that you can do, honestly, since we got to look at you come out the house every day with that face. To serve me my little 3-5 with them pajamas on, that little meat meat showing. We don't like it. And them toes are ugly, too. But your weed is amazing. And that's why we like it. I'm going to give him a $5 tip just in case he see this. Yeah. $1 at a time, though. Not all at once. Uh... Moving right along, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, I got a story for y'all. Quick little story just happened to me about four days ago. Um, as unfortunate as it was. So y'all remember last episode? I told y'all I got a new car. Whatever, cool. Woo woo woo. I'm too lazy of a piece of shit to go to the place where I need to go. You know, get the car registered, insurance. You know, basically the shit that you need to do when you get a goddamn car. Hello, but I ain't have that to do at the time. So. I was driving and having a good time, and I decided to go on Sniffies. Y'all remember what Sniffies did from the last episode? It's a gay day to nap. If you don't remember, pause the video right now, go back, and skip. It's chaptered out. It'll tell you exactly what's where. Went on Sniffies, cruising website. Guy hits me up. Cool. He's about seven miles away. I'm the kind of nigga, if you ain't within 0.3 mile radius, we're not, there's nothing we could do for each other. But lucky for him, I was drunk enough, high enough. I had a full tank of gas and I was ready to ride, baby. So I rode on out there. Mind you, my windows are tinted. I tinted my car. The side windows are tinted. All right. To put this in y'all mind, is a minivan. There's a front window, two regular windows, the side sliding doors, two windows behind that, and the big motherfucker in the back. Big motherfucker in the back, kind of tinted. Two right here, tinted. Two right here, tinted. Driver, passenger, not tenant. Front, not tenant. Cool. Talking to the nigga, he like, okay, um, you know, I can't host. So basically what host means is you can't come to my house. We got to figure this shit out. Either I got to come to yours, you got to come and get me. We got to go to a park. We got to figure this shit out some other way. And that's what we did. I was like, so, I mean, where do you want to go? I'm with it. He was like, well, I know a park around the corner. 
And he was like, um, is your car big enough? You know, is it tenant? You know, asking all the right questions. I was like, yeah, we should be good. So why the fuck I pull up to this nigga house? I mean, not to his house, surprise, to this motherfucking, um, it was a shopping center. Literally a shopping center. Like, um, Dollar General, a hair store, Chinese place, a shopping center, about seven cars in the parking lot. They all kind of spread out. So me thinking in my head, you know, it's just random cars in the parking lot. Nobody knows what the fuck is what. Some of the cars with tenants, some of them won't. We don't know what's broke down, who work here. Motherfuckers might be stocking shit overnight. We don't know what's going on. And it looks cool. You know, riding by, it doesn't look like, you know, nothing sketchy. And I was so, fast forward. I get to him. I'm like, all right, so where's the park? He's like, um... Oh shit! I don't even got no part for real. I think we good right here. What you think? My stupid drunk ass looking around. We should be all right. <laughs> I'm like, you been here before? He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew he was lying. He made that little ugly smirk. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Shut up, stupid. We both going to jail. Damn what? Just saying stuff. Um. So cool. After that, we in the car getting lit. Mind you, this little detail matters. On my way there, I'm smoking a blunt. Smoking a blunt, I smoke about half the blunt when I get there. Me thinking to do smoke, try to be generous, put the blunt halfway out. You know, we finish smoking when I get there. Cool. This nigga, it won't give him that. Soon as we realized that we can, you know, kind of be there, we went straight to the back of that van and we got right the fuck to it. We was not bullshitting, playing no games. I lost a half of the blunt at the time. And I had two airplane bottles, the little small mini bottles that you buy for like a dollar. Um, one of them I had drank. The other one was still in my bag. Right. We do what we got to do. Done. Which is kind of crazy. Most stories you kind of get caught halfway through. But we bust that one night. I ain't gonna lie. And so after that, okay, bam, I look up out the back window. Police car sitting right there. Now, I'm scared of shit, obviously, because it's like, what the fuck? The police is right here. But it's not giving like, we're here for you. It's giving more like, what the fuck we thought, pretty much. Just looked like a pretty chill parking lot to kind of sit for a little bit. Um, and they started sitting. But mind you, my back window is not tinted. I'm on the floor floor, like all the way on the floor board, sitting down. This nigga's on the back chair, but he's short enough to where the head ref is kind of covering his head. Nobody can see us. Nobody knows we're in there. So I decide to get up and go to the front of the car, and I was about to crank it up and drive. In my head, I'm like, okay, I got the half a blunt. I did forget about the bottle at the time, but I'm like, okay, I got the half a blunt. I can kind of just put that under my nuts, drive off. They pull us over, worst case scenario. They don't find it because it's under my fucking nuts. Just when I thought that was about to be a thing, I walk up to the front of the seat. This nigga's talking about, bro, bro, I'm on probation, I'm on probation. I'm like, oh, fuck. I'm harboring a goddamn fugitive. I was so fucking scared for my life, y'all. At this point, no, all right, so I get to the front seat, look in the mirror. He see my hair, of course. I don't have this in. Y'all know my ponytail. I have my ponytails at the time, so you can't miss that shit. So this motherfucker drove up to the side door where I was at. The police, did, but he never put the lights on. Thank God. I would have been so extra embarrassed. He would have did that. But he came up, you know, trying to shine a flashlight. Can't see shit, bucko. 5% tent, baby. So he's just shining, shining, shining. Comes up to me. He's like, what are you doing here? I was like, I'm waiting on my friend to meet me halfway. He was like, meet you halfway from where? I said, Midtown. He was like, oh, Midtown. It's quite a ways from here. I was quite a ways from home, y'all. I don't even get down like that, but I was a little ways away. He was like, that's quite a ways from here. I was like, yeah. What's crazy? He never asked why. Now that I think back, he just kind of took my word for it. He was like, oh, okay, um, so you don't have nowhere else to kind of hang out until they get to you? And I was like, I mean, no, this seemed like, you know, a pretty chill parking lot. I didn't think it would be like a big deal. He was like, you have license and registration? Gave him the license, gave him the registration. Mind you, ain't shit registered to nobody but nobody. Nothing's registered. So I showed him the bill of sale and where they signed the title over to me. They signed the title over to me, so I'm good to go as far as this is not giving stolen car, but he knows ain't shit legit about the motherfucker. So he's like, um, well, in that case, it's still in such and such name. I was like, yeah, that's my aunt, whatever. He was like, well, do you have insurance? Bitch, when he said insurance, I looked at him. I said, I'm pretty sure she do. I said, I could try to give her a call. He said, you can't try to give her a call. You're going to have to give her a call. You can't leave this car tonight. You can't. I said, I'm going to have to tow this car tonight. I was like, my God. Mind you, as he fucking gagging me from that, this motherfucker looks at me and says, you been smoking tonight? I said, um, well, I smoked a little bit. I went from, uh, I smoked a little bit. 
I said, well, I smoked a little bit before I got here. He was like, oh, okay, so you mean to tell me there's no weed in the car? I can kind of smell it. I said, no, there's no weed in the car. Um, I don't see it. There's no weed in the car. Mind you, I saw him pulling up. Remember that half a blunt I had? I'm looking for the half a blunt, the ashtray, the armrest. I'm looking in my lap, the floor. I'm like, fuck, where is the half a blunt? Went on in until I said, no, I didn't have no weed. This motherfucker took the flashlight, shining, shining, shining. Just, I, he, ain't let, he ain't tell me he got the car yet. Still shining the flashlight, trying to see all through the passenger side and stuff. He said, go ahead and step out the vehicle for me. I said, oh, God, bitch, I'm going to jail. This nigga's in the trunk. Five charges off rip. My mama is not up at 3, 4 in the morning. It was nothing but horror. It was a mess. It was a mess. It was horrible. And after that, he was like, uh, he said, go ahead and step out for me. Now, all I'm thinking about at this point, fuck the dude. I don't even fuck about him no more. If he go to jail, he going to jail. That's just on him and his parole officer. I'm scared about this motherfucker finding that little airplane bottle and the little blunt. Luckily, never found it. He's shining the light all in the driver door, all in the um the middle thing that you, you know, lift your arm up. And um he never found it. And I'm fucking shocked because I'm expecting the motherfucker to find it because I know it's in there. So he didn't find it. My bag that the little airplane bottle was in was all the way in the back, too. So, um... Yeah, he was like, did you answer the phone? I was like, no. He said, oh, okay, well, you can't leave this parking lot until, um, no, he said, you can't leave this parking lot. And if I catch you leaving this parking lot, I'm going to pull you over and we're going to tow your car. I was like, okay, well, my friend should be here soon, still lying. He was like, okay, it's hot out here, y'all. It's getting crazy. Yeah, that's a, but he said he was going to tow the car because I'm like, God damn, I don't got $150 right now. No, no, yeah, dead ass. No, for real. So, um, mind you, now I'm in the point where I'm in the parking lot. Literally, as soon as this nigga pull off, this dumbass nigga in the fucking back, this nigga still getting out. Like the cop is actively pulling out of the parking lot. He's like, "You think I can go now? You think I can go now?" I'm like, "Nigga, no. He's still right there. What are you talking about?" He's like, "No, bro, I gotta go. I gotta go. My people's and some, some, some." I said, "Go ahead. I don't give a fuck at this point. You're going to jail, not me." <laughs> Look, I did what he told me to do. Sit my black ass right here. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> So he gets out and he, you know, did whatever. The cops saw him, didn't say anything, kept walking. I mean, he kept driving. So at this point, I'm stuck at 4.30 in the goddamn morning in the back of my car. It's running. Got a little bit of gas left. Air going. Airplane bottle left. Once he got out, I found the half a blunt. So I'm like, okay, thank God. Shitty officer. He he only searched my driver door and kind of just flashed the light a little bit. I could have had a fucking kilo of cocaine literally sitting in the back seat in a gun. He would have never knew. He didn't give a fuck. But maybe that's because I'm a good liar. You know, he he trusted me. So he was black. He was black. And so, yeah, I'm sitting in things. So I'm like, all right, at this point, 30 minutes went by. This motherfucker still, when I tell y'all I'm in the shopping center, I can see him driving down. Every three to five minutes. I'm talking about driving back and forth, back and forth. I said, you know what? Fuck it. There's nothing else I can do. Oh, Jesus, the budget is fucked, y'all. If y'all can hear me, my cries, the cash app is right here. $40 to get us off the ground and get us something to have it right here so I can. You know what I mean? Help us out. It's right here. But, yeah, so... I got in the back. I finished a half a blunt. I took the rest of that drink and I kind of played a little music, started doing my little woo. I'm like, shit, I might as well make some of it. Shit, I'm sitting here looking goddamn crazy. So that was that. I said, okay, now I got to make my first attempt. He started spacing out his drives back and forth. After about, I started timing it. About that seven, eight minute mark, I tried to make my run for it. I think he know the sweet spot because as soon as I pulled out, I'm like right here at the stop sign, about to pull out onto the street from the shopping center. About to take a left or a right. As soon as I get to the little thing about to turn, I hit that signal light. That motherfucker sped down. Didn't turn at me. Didn't look at me. Didn't hit the light. He just sped down to fucking intimidate me. I hit that motherfucking reverse so goddamn fast. <laughs> it turned that bitch around. <laughs> and I went back to uh, the little parking spot I was in. So by this point, it's what? 530? It's like 530 at this point. So I looked up on Google the shift change for the Atlanta Police Department, which was at 645. I had to wait at 645. And that's when I realized there was no more police driving up and down the street. The motherfucker did the shift change or whatever. So, uh, yeah, he was gone. So I'm driving back home. Excuse me. Mind you, our phone is our keys here at this apartment building. My phone that I had my key on is a piece of shit. It only charges wirelessly. The motherfucker died. Could not get in the house. Therefore, when I got home, I'm sitting in the goddamn, um, what is this called? 
the street. I'm sitting on the side of the street, parked on the side of the street. Why the fuck did I fall asleep in the car as soon as I got home, y'all? Sat in there for about a good 15, 20 minutes, woke up, the landlord lady walking her dog. She looks up at me, looked down at the dog, kept walking. I say, yeah, mind it. So I had a rough night, motherfucker. So yeah, that was my journey cruising. Do not rec well, actually, I do recommend it. I ain't gonna lie. We had a good time. Me and the boy had a really good time. He was cool. He kind of had threw me a little bit because he was a lot more feminine than I kind of hoped for. The pictures he sent me kind of gave like gang, 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 but he like he might wear a crop top if you ain't looking. But who cares? I don't know. He was a good time. Um, what do we have after the end? Okay, cool. All right. So I have another topic here, which is about present parents that are still absent and if either of y'all want to come over on the other side of the table at any point you are more than welcome to to join in if you would like um so yeah basically what this is about um uh, basically parents who feel like that they feel like you know i provide for you i take care of you i you know put the food on the table um Basically, you should be fucking grateful and they feel like that there should never be a need to, I guess, get to know their kids on like a different level. And then as time goes by, you know, they'll wonder, like, you know, why do they listen to this kind of music? Why do they hang out with these kind of weird people? Why do they go to these kind of places? Why are they into this kind of stuff? And it's because that's who they are. People never really get um I feel like a chance to really know their kids. Me personally, I feel like my friends are like on a whole nother it's just a whole nother spectrum as far as somebody getting to know you and you know, you know, the both of them love you, but only one can kind of like connect with you. Like dead ass, I can give one of my friends my debit card right now, send them into any restaurant. They would know exactly what to get me. They would know what condiments to get, what I want on the side, what I want fried hard, what I don't like. They can get me down, you know, to that T. But I realize, um, and they keep up, you know, like with a lot of current information. I realize that people like in those situations with the parents that aren't really connected um, with the child, that they are. Damn, I lost my train of thought for a second. Hold on, y'all. Bear with me. It's been a long day. Let's take a drink on that. All right, we're back. I need a lighter, y'all. I'm about to sweat my new hairdo out. I just got it done yesterday. This is a mess. Yeah, so yeah. You saw all the plugs running at the same time? Disgusting. I'm weak. <laughs> and see, so y'all niggas be too late. And when are we go to another plug? Then y'all be mad. And now we the bad person. Dirty dick bastards. But, um,. Yeah, parents do better. Get to know your kids um, so they can, you know, and that's where I was getting to. So they can kind of be their self around you. I realize a lot of situations where, especially me personally, a lot of my parents bring up old stuff. Like they'll be like, oh, do you still talk to such and such? Or do you still some, some, some? Or do you still like some, some, some? It's like because all they kind of really know is bits and glimmers of kind of like what you grew up on but they don't really know the thick of like the kind of life that you're living right now and uh, that's why they kind of be shocked too i think they might find out like goddamn your child done this this isn't that and they was like what my child would never my kid wouldn't do nothing like that and they was you know and they you know quick to go back for him but it's like whole time you don't even know this little nigga at all Then there's another side of it, too. You got some parents who I feel like are a little bit too much of a friend, but I still think it's necessary for you to at least try to become friends on, you know, in some degree to your child so you can kind of understand them, learn them, and you can kind of like bond through that. I seen this girl that posted on Facebook the other day. She was talking about how her son 
is probably like 12 or 13 years old now and she's like everything that she do with him he calls it boring and he don't want to do it with her and all he do is sit in his room all day and just play video games he never really comes out he only want to go out when he like going to hang out with his girlfriend and she like god damn like you know um i want my baby back i want to go to like the movies and stuff like that and nigga probably don't want to go to the movies learn how to play fucking gta with him if that's what the fuck you really want to do invite his girlfriend out take the motherfuckers out to eat everybody like doing um what do you call it the seafood boats i don't know you got to kind of figure out stuff on how to relate with your kids otherwise they are going to re not reject you but they're going to like they're going to kind of be you know standoffish in a way um and then also too shout out to i will say my parents personally parents with growth because I can say way back when, you know, when, like, when I was growing up, that's kind of how I felt. Like, I didn't never feel, like, I always felt like my parents loved me. If I asked them for something, they would definitely do it. But I ain't never felt like the motherfuckers actually took the time to kind of get to, um, you know, get to really know me and ask me questions and, you know, um, say, well, well, why do you think this way? Or... I don't know, like, what kind of stuff, like, are you really into now? And so back then, every time they would ask me something, it would be like, I don't know. Oh, or cool. It's like, you know, like a very, like, short answer. Um, and they was always working and they was always busy. But I think now that I've, like, grown up and I started doing different stuff, I'm very, very, very thankful for my support system that I have in my parents. They always ask me what I got going on. They be tuned in. They even watch the goddamn podcast, believe it or not. Um, and, yeah, I can just tell, like, you know, the difference of, I don't know, I guess them wanting to be better people. And if any parents watching now, you feel like that you didn't, you know, might, but might've fucked your kids up or you feel like you done fucked the bond up or you fucked up the relationship and you feel like it might be hard to come back from, that is 100% not the case. Um, it is never too late to um, make amends with your children. Now, in the same breath, if somebody is too toxic, they done fucked you up and they done done some shit that you cannot get past again and it's just fucking unforgivable, then fuck them. Tell them bitches to shove a stick up their ass and never talk to them again. But it's definitely worth, you know, trying to put the effort forth to do our stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And also, kick them grown motherfuckers out. I realized, too, no, dare that. Because I realized, too, you know, there's nothing wrong with, like, going back. Say, for example, you're 26, 27, 28, 29 years old, and shit get real. You lose your job. You get evicted. Um, you know, shit really happens. You got to go back to square one and kind of live with your parents, you know, to get things off the ground again. That's cool. But it's a lot of grown ass people who know their parents got money, and they will dead ass live off of them until it ain't a fucking drop of water left in the goddamn bucket uh, and they will let them and then you know people will call them out on it i got an aunt like that my mama called her out on it we called her out on it and all they do is protect them and they can't do no wrong and they can't and those become those self-entitled weird ass people who don't know how to use their emotions don't know how to socialize with other people every time somebody called them out they want to fight they want to shoot it got to be a big thing now they don't have no accountability because y'all done spoiled the fuck out of them kick them grown motherfuckers out for real, for real. And then, hmm. which is rough. You know, it is rough. But it's on the flip side, too. You also got some fucked up parents who done done their kids wrong. And um, they don't have nowhere else to go. They done burned all of their bridges. The uns don't want them. They done fucked up every financial assistance. You can't get no more food stamps. You can't get no more wicks. So now you're going to try to live off your kids now. You know, hoping they got a place for you to stay. And, um... You know, hoping that they basically take in all the fucked up trauma that you didn't gave them over all the years, but um, uh -uh. fuck that, fuck that. And I don't, I'm not a fan of like, oh, it's family. Fuck family. You, if you not fuck family, I take that back. Not fuck family, but if you don't act like family to me, then I don't really consider us family. Um, I'm that kind of person where I would, you just like another motherfucker in the street. You do me wrong, I'm not gonna do you wrong back. I'm just gonna stop fucking with you. And I realize like a lot of people like. One week, you can have an aunt that's still from you. You will apologize. You can have next week, she just stole your goddamn car. Next thing, she just stole the baby's pampers. Next week, like, she just don't get enough. She start, you know what I mean? But you just cannot break. It's a trauma bond. 
they taught you how to basically deal with them, no matter how fucked up they do you, no matter how fucked up they are, no matter how much they abuse you. And what's crazier than that, they will literally abuse you from their fucking deathbed. Like, there's a lot of people, where well, there's one girl that I've seen where angulation is one. A lot of parents, like, you know, put their kids against each other. So that's kind of um, the example that she used was like Christmas time. You got three kids, you only get two, and you the third one got to watch the other kids open their presents. That's called triangulation. They put y'all against each other because they don't want y'all to have no healthy relationship. And then you have, what I don't know. It's just crazy. We ain't going to get all the way into it today, y'all, but just kind of be aware, be conscious of how you letting people treat you because it's only going to affect your happiness, to be honest. It's only going to affect your happiness. So I'm a lot more closer to my friends um, and in the same breath rebuilding with my parents and i like the stage that i'm in now um because a lot of people have to you know they got to let them talk to parents go but i can say my parents have actually put in effort to make our relationship better and it does not go unnoticed and i love them so 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 much for that and yeah that's all that y'all it's kind of crazy how we started off talking about cleaning our assholes and we ended up talking about family trauma don't y'all love it here at the toronto show uh <laughs> so yeah we're gonna start wrapping it up well how many minutes i'm at we're going to start wrapping this bad boy up, y'all. That's cute. Okay. All right. We're going to do the little three segments real quick. Um, cool. We're going to do kudos. The kudos this week is going to Cupcake. Um, Cupcake. I'm not sure. If you don't know who Cupcake is because you might live under a fucking rock, she is one of the best female rappers to live. She actually um, is lyrical as fuck, but she mainly known for her, um, you know, her comedy song where she's talking about pussy and sucking and fucking and you know crazy stuff like that but those are basically just to get you know kind of clickbait she actually got some real songs with real rap um i saw her live she did a fucking amazing job she looked good sound good she lost over i don't know how many pounds but she snatched her body back beautiful black chocolate girl new album called dauntless manifesto so yeah go tap in the cupcake I do have, oh yeah, so I was doing Would You Rather before, but I'm actually going to switch the segment up, y'all. I'm going to do something called um, Taranzuation. So what that is, is basically a situation that happened, and I'm just going to kind of give you feedback on what I would do in that scenario. But this specific one today, I got a DM from this girl. That's going to be our situation. Cool. And yeah, this was actually from one of the people from the video that had went viral. Okay, she said, I forgot what she asked me the first time. She said, appreciate your response. You are so awesome. Okay, I'll make it a long story short. I'm recently re-entering the dating scene, and it is a lot different from what I can remember. I met a guy who is really decent, and I'm almost positive that he is bisexual. Currently unsure if that is a deal breaker for me. My question is how can I navigate that conversation with him while providing a safe place and not coming off offensive? We have been conversating for a month or so, and we have had conversations about bisexual women as his ex was, but is currently strictly dating a female. So his ex said she was bisexual, but now she's currently strictly dating females. Cool. If you have any insight, to offer on bisexual black men what would be helpful that would be helpful as well i don't feel like what's portrayed on tv is factual mm. hold on i want to go to you damn i can't even go to her picture because there's a screenshot from the dm hold on let me re let me make sure i want to lead you in the right direction girl let me make sure i know what i know i met a guy who was <laughs> who was really decent almost positive his bisexual currently unsure if it's a deal breaker for me my question is how can i never get a conversation with finding space face and not coming off offensive we have been conversating for a month or so i guess to start off i wish you would have put in the dm whether you had like concrete proof if you knew that he was um bisexual or not but for you to ask me that in the first place uh, is a deal breaker for you. That automatically lets me know that you are cool with it and you just don't know how to go in and have that conversation. But it's a conversation you're going to have to have, especially if you really like them. Otherwise, um, if you know that, well, I don't know. It's kind of, it's a little more perplexed than that because 
it really doesn't make a fuck whether he's bisexual or not. If y'all gonna be together, y'all gonna be fucking each other. You understand what I'm saying? Now, if y'all are in a poly relationship or y'all decide to be in an open relationship or something like that, that's where it would kind of more matter. But if you genuinely like the guy, you just kind of know if he may have sucked a dick before, then, I mean, ask him. I mean, I'm pretty sure he'll tell you the truth. But I wouldn't really dive too much into that if y'all plan on being in a, um, not a, what do you call it? A a relationship with just two people. Monogamous relationship. See, I got people here last time. Y'all made me say a peas too in that one video and it was a pill too. Like a goddamn fool. This old white lady in the comments helped me out. Yeah, so definitely go in. Yeah, have the conversation with them. Um, don't come off aggressive. Definitely not. Don't come off judgmental. Just kind of open the um. Open the floor up for him. That's really all you can do. If he gets fucking offense, you know, defensive or, you know, he want to cuss you out and start yelling and stuff like that, it's really not much you can do. Um, outside of kind of hear him out and maybe eventually he'll shut the fuck up and hear what you got to say too. But, yeah, you just going to have to keep it real with him. Like, look, I think that you're a little whoop, 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 but I'm cool with that. I just kind of need you to let me know so I can know what I'm working with. And he's going to let you know. But I really want to know why you're asking me. I want you to DM me again and tell me, do y'all plan on being in an open relationship or not? Because that's the only thing that makes a difference. If y'all going to be monogamous, y'all going to be fucking each other. So fuck everybody else. And that's that. And that's that. All right, we're going to wrap this motherfucker up. The last thing we're going to do is the word of the day. And the word of the day is time. The word of the day is time. And I don't know if anybody else feel how I feel. I feel like we are running the fuck out. We don't got time to bullshit right now, y'all. I don't know what you might be doing or what you might be thinking about, but baby, you're going to have to act on it because time is flying and shit's getting kind of real. Inflation is fucked up. Rent, rent prices is fucked up. Life is fucked up. People are fucked up. Your family's fucked up. Um, so you got to do something. If you need to Make amends with somebody, patch up that relationship. If you know you was wrong, go and apologize to them. If something wasn't, you know, that big of a deal and you feel like you overreacted, go and tell that person, hey, you, you know, we went through this, but it's not really worth losing each other. So, you know, I still want you to be a part of my life. Go and start that career you've been bullshitting on. Put that application in tomorrow. If you ain't got no job, get on Indeed tonight. Do 20 goddamn applications and you better call every single last one before Friday. Otherwise, you don't want to work. And that's just real shit. If you're thinking about somebody that you might like, you might got a little crush on, you don't know if they kind of into you, ask that motherfucker out. And start that first video. I run into a lot of people who basically budget, as we know, is a little underdeveloped, but we're working on it. Um, but what I was saying was I run into a lot of content creators who are at a point where they don't really know where to start and they're trying to figure out, you know, how to get things off the ground. What kind of helped me was basically recording a video and i didn't post it so when i recorded the video i looked at it and i kept looking at it and i kept looking at it and it kind of kind of made my brain start going like damn you know i could have posted i mean i could have did it this way i could have said this i could have said that um you know could have did it in a different way and you'll start kind of like overthinking it and then you'll kind of get into that like editing way and it'll make you want to do it again or do it differently so i would say start off doing that um maybe send it to a friend or two you know see what they kind of think about it but don't let nobody don't let anybody's opinion, you know, persuade you from not doing it. But, um, yeah, definitely make that first video, no matter what it is, no matter how big or small, even if you want to do a YouTube short, shorts can go as little as 15 seconds. Um, I'll be doing videos of my fucking dog, me going to restaurants, me going, I do uh fucking reaction videos. So I do a lot more, you know, outside of this podcast, just to kind of keep content going. It does not matter. If you got old videos in your phone, you might've traveled to Cali. You might've traveled to France. You might've went to a concert. You might've went to, you know, a cool event or something. Start posting old shit your views will still go up one of my highest videos um right now on youtube was me at coachella um watching kanye west on sunday service and that's one of my highest view videos and that shit was in 2019 i ain't post that till this year if you got old videos start there once you get comfortable enough start making new stuff but start somewhere and start today you don't have tomorrow to do it you're gonna have to record a video today you can edit that bitch tomorrow but you can't start tomorrow you gotta start tonight and today Pause this motherfucker and subscribe now and you better start that video. 
And that's pretty much that. Again, thank y'all for tuning in again. I thank y'all for allowing me to go viral once again. And um, yeah, it's up from here. It's up from here. I'm probably not going to do no interviews until maybe like um, maybe episode 20. But just look where we at. We on you know, fucking episode 10 and look what we've done this far. It's crazy. But couldn't do it without y'all. I love y'all and shout out to y'all until next time. Okay.